Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Wow. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, my name is Norma G. Covered alcoholic. All right, girl. God, I mean, I'm quite sure some of you guys heard me since I've been here. Uh, okay, one, how many? How many? Oh, jeez. Oh, God, give me something different to say. Uh, anyway, but, uh, you know, you know, when you come from the heart, you know, you, you don't, it's nothing boring when you come from this. And uh, what can I say? But, uh, woo. well, anyway, I, uh, I called my uh, snowbird in Hawaii about an hour ago, and I want to know, you know, I'm, I let, let him know I'm on my way back. I hope you're on your way back home anyway, but um, because he, he lives in Michigan. And uh, anyway, uh, it is what it is. It's time, to, you know, I got another week, Curtis and I. But life is good. And uh, I forgot my big book, so I'll use this one right here. It's all the same. Hey, hello. Hey. Uh, what can I say? I tell you, on, coming up on 30 years of uncut sobriety. Amen. I picked up one white chip. Here it is. I walked in the rooms and uh, from a treatment with a spiritual experience. And I walked in, you know, with some steps in my heart. And I walked in and I raised my, I walked in with a big book that was already marked up. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I felt studious. <laughs> you know, I, I had a, I had a yellow, I had a yellow pen, a marker. And uh, they, you know, I raised my hand and I said, "Yeah, uh, you know, hey, you guys, I ain't never going back out there again. I ain't gonna never drink. I ain't gonna never use again." And I said, "And, and plus, I'm going global." Oh. <laughs> and somebody said, "Shut up, sit down and listen." I said, mm, "I know he ain't talking to me." And so anyway, and so I went to another meeting, a, a church meeting. Thinking they'll be nicer to me over there in the church. <laughs> and I said, Yeah, you guys, I, I, you know, I'm not going to go back out there drinking again. I'm not, I'm free. I, the, the screaming demon is gone. All I did was walk up in the treatment center, 90 pounds, looking like a toothpick with lips. <laughs> 90 pounds, looked like I had fallen out of an ugly tree and hit every branch on my way down. <laughs> and all I did was sit down on a $30,000 treatment bed and I threw up my hands. And I said, God, you heal me or you kill me. Heal me or kill me. I said, I can no longer live like this. And you guys, guess what, you know, something out of the sphere of the universe, it came and boom, I had this upheaval experience of power that came into my life. And, uh, and God came into a space and time and he, uh, he set me free. He set me free just like that. And, uh, and I knew then the power of God. And, and, and so like, uh, you know, I truly believe that alcoholism was nothing but uh, it, it was a disease of unmet, uh, unmet needs. I mean, I was I had needs that was not met. And which was I needed some power to stay sober. And see, powerlessness uh, is nothing but, uh, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's really, it's a spiritual malady. Spiritual malady. That's what the book says. No power. So I, I'm not here to impose God. I'm, you know, I'm just here to expose. <laughs> Based on my experience, strength, and hope. Because the word power is mentioned one time in the steps. But the word power is mentioned 67 times in the big book. Hello. And the word uh, alcohol is mentioned one time. It's 200 words right here. 200 words. Alcohol is mentioned one time. One time. So I realized that I had no, when I dragged up in that treatment center, I picked up and started drinking and using at 30, or I crossed that line at 32. Just before we got married. He didn't know when he had married. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell him. <laughs> I wanted that ring on my finger. I don't know. I won't gonna sit down and say, baby, I got something to share with you. But I knew that night when I picked up alcohol and cocaine, that's my story. Something uh, engulfed me. 
something that I couldn't see. And I knew my life was going to change forever. I said, oh, no, what did I do? What did I do to myself? And, and I knew that the woman that I was with that night, she was a 12-year friendship. But I knew also that she was not my friend. You know, you know, you don't turn someone over. You don't turn your best friend over to something that you know is so powerful and so evil at the same time. And so, like anyway, but uh, I came. I went home to my fiance here, and I just told him. I said, you know, I said, oh, I said this money that I have here, I want you to hide it from me. I need you to hide this money from me. Uh, you know, I have some uncles and aunts. So I was the one that made everybody laugh. In the family, on both sides of the family, and I called an uncle from Delray Beach. I was living in living in California, born in Daytona, raised in Connecticut, and living in California when I picked up that night. And I called him up before I met him, before alcohol and drugs. And I called his uncle up in Delray and said, I, "You know, my dad making more money than what you making." I said, "But he's stingy. He doesn't want to help no one. He ain't want to help his kids." So. You know, I you know, I said, Unc, I need some money to get a business started. I told him just like that. And I just thought he was gonna tell me no. But he didn't. Two days I had this pile of money. I could not believe it. I said, Oh my god, what am I gonna do? Oh, oh but I put it on the money market. And this is before alcohol and drugs. But when I picked up that night, I knew I said I knew that money was threatened. You know, what was in my mind was telling me to take it off the market. Take it off the market. But I went home to my fiance. I said to him, I said, whatever comes down the pike, just don't let me use that money. Don't let me touch that money. I said, it's for an investment. And guess what, you guys? That house went into foreclosure five times behind my drinking and using. So anyway, you guys, uh, and, you know, and we celebrated, March 19th, we celebrated uh, 36 years of being married. And uh, love is not love until it's unconditional. And he proved the power of unconditional love. He loved me when he didn't have to love me. He was kind to me when he didn't have to be kind to me. And then he turned around and he forgave me when he did not have to forgive me. And uh, so so after I had that spiritual experience, seven years later, oh gosh, I could not believe something that I couldn't see that had taken over me. And I was not a happy camper. I was not an alcoholic drug addict. I was happy. I knew that this was not the way to live. You know, you pick up a 32 years old. Somebody, girl, girl, you 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 was an old fool. <laughs> pick up and start drinking and using at 32. You you what was wrong with you? I said, don't call me old. Old is when your best your best friend compliments you on your alligator shoes when you're only barefooted. That's old. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you guys, I'm I'm just so grateful. I mean, just talking about that, we live and learn. We live and learn. Through our experiences, we live and learn. So when I dragged up in that treatment center for the last time, and uh, he had told me on the way to treatment, he said, this is it, my VA benefits. Uh, they said, this is your last treatment. He's retired from uh, the military. Uh, Agent Orange twice. Eight major heart attacks after I got sober. And, uh, yeah, eight major heart. He's still here. My mother had nerve to say last night, I can't believe he's still, he's still here. And uh, I started saying, I can't believe you're still here. But um, <laughs> I didn't say it, though. Anyway, and she, I said, Mom, he ain't going nowhere. You know, you know so Mom, uh, those eight major heart attacks, I tell you what, it helped me grow up and it helped me grow up on purpose. I realized that he's not my source and he's not my supply. He's, he's my husband. He's my lover. He's my best friend. And so anyway, I, she said, I can't believe he'd be 79 years old. And he, what time did he go to bed today? Now she want to know what time. I, I said, Mom, I told you that he went to bed at 6 o'clock because he was tired. He went fishing and went to meetings, you know, two meetings and went shopping. And, you know, he fixed the air conditioner in the car. Oh, he's tired. You better go back there and check on him. <laughs> Y'all can see why I drink. But anyway, you guys, I, I, <laughs> I said, Mom, he ain't going nowhere. Mom, like, you know he's like he ain't going nowhere no time soon. I said, Mom, because he's in purpose. I need him to help me carry the message around the world. You know, 
I said, you know, get, get up because, you know, she, 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 her man gone, my sister's man gone, you know what I'm saying? I'm out, but he's in purpose. Bob and Bill, you go out in twos, you don't go out in one, you go out in twos. In the good book, the B-I-B-L-E, basic instruction before leaving earth, James and John, they went out in twos. I need somebody to help me carry this message around the world. He ain't going nowhere, mama. Even though he had those major, eight major heart attacks, but what that did for me, it helped me pull, pull up my big girl panties. And realize that God's my source and my God is my supply. But he is my husband. So anyway, she got real quiet. You could hear a rat pee on cotton. But um, anyway, I'm so grateful to be here to share about, you know, about sobriety. And, and I talk about these steps. And, and knowing that this, this program was never designed to be common. This program was designed to be cosmic. You know, cosmic intelligence. I can only come with you, to you, with an experience of happy, joyous, and free. You know, because I, I just like, you, got, you love to run your mouth. And then she had nerd tell me last week, two weeks ago, uh, I had a dream. I said, what was that, Mom? She lives in uh, West Palm Beach. I said, what was that, Mom? I had a, God came to me in my dream and told me to put you back in the will. <laughs> I said, excuse me? Back in the will? Why was I taken out? Because you talk too much. I said, Mom, I talk too much. Mom, here almost 30 years, I've been running around with a big book in one hand and a microphone in the other. I talk too much. I said, God gave me the power and the ability to talk and the creativity. I talk too much. See, Mom, I, let me tell you something. I'd rather have a closed mouth and look stupid than an open mouth and remove all doubt. You know, most people run out of ideas way before they run out of words. Mom, what are you talking about? I talk too much. And I knew then, no wonder I ran away from that household three times as a kid. <laughs> anyway, she put me, she's putting me back in the will now as I talk. She got to turn it down the whole nine yards. But and God had to come to her in the dream, put her back in the will. <laughs> anyway, you guys, and that's the reason why. But I said, Mom, but guess what? I'm in God's will. And one thing about God's will, it transcends all will of human limitation and manipulation. It does. So I'm grateful to be here to talk about power. Power is mentioned one time, and the word power is mentioned 67 times. As we felt new power flow in, we have recovered and given the power to help others. Knowledge of his will and the power to carry it out came to believe that this power could restore us to sanity. And when it comes to this, once a mind has been stretched into a new idea, that mind will refuse to return to its original dimension. Because a mind that is imbued with absolute truth is a mind of restoration, revelation, and regeneration. Now show me a person who claims to be recovered but shows no immeasurable difference in his behavior is a person that is walking in delusions. Because information without application is hallucination. So anyway, you guys, I, I like to talk. I, you, I'm a talker. You know, I so I bought I wanted some transmission though. And I want some truth to come out, you know, when I get to talk to any newcomers and all that round. I like talking and bring just transmitting the hope beyond the scope of human limitations. This is the hope beyond the scope, you guys. It says here no human power. I believe it. I came in the rooms, I realized that no human power could relieve me from my disease of alcoholism because it's spiritual by nature. And, and you know, and the big, and also the book talk about that science demonstrates that visual proof is the weakest proof of all. In other words, what we don't see is far greater than what we do see. Outward appearances does not always reveal inward, real, inward reality. I like to back it up by saying that real power, it hides itself. You can't see electricity, but you can see the effects. Look at the fan, air conditioning. You can't see sun rays, but you can see the effects. You white folks, you'll be looking good during summertime. I'm telling you, I tell you, you can see the effects. <laughs> you can't see an earthquake, but you can see the effects. You know, Japan is still getting this. After six years now, they're still trying to clean up behind that earthquake in Japan. And then the tsunami came, okay? All right? But you can't see that gorilla. I call it the screaming demon. You, can't, you couldn't see that screaming demon on my life. 30 years ago, but you can see the effects 
90 pounds, I look like buckwheat going astray. <laughs> I mean, I look, look like I had fallen out of an ugly tree. I told you, and hit every, every bridge on my way down. You can see the effects of the disease. But it was based on a choice. All right? Based on a choice. Life is choice driven. We make choices, and then choices turn around, and it makes us. Because life is an expression of the choices that we make, and the choices that we make will define who we are, and who we are, it, it's going to tell our story. It's going to tell our story. My story has already been told. Uh, that's why I'm not here tonight to talk about what it was like, what it was like, what it was like, what it was like, what it was like. I don't want to make a newcomer thirsty. Hello. And you know, because I have 30, I got, I'm coming up on 30 years of a, a new past, a new history. I got a new history, you guys. And the screaming demon, when I dragged up in that treatment center for the last time, I sat down on that $30,000 treatment bed and I threw up my hands. That screaming demon has never returned. Now that's happy, joyous, and free. No matter what I've gone through, all these challenges in life, because the power behind me is so much greater than any problem that's in front of me. And so my new history, you know, that's behind me. And here's the mystery right here. Mystery is something that's unknown to the human mind, okay? This is a mystery. A 100 men and women who recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body and to show you precisely how they have recovered is what? The main purpose of what? This book. See, the big book is the Bible in drag. I am. Hello. That's right. The big book is done for me with the telephone boo, dear for Clark Kent. <laughs> it gave me some power. And and the big book, I tell you, I always say, if you ever want to hide a hundred dollars, just stick it in the big book. And you ain't gonna like, you know, you ain't gonna find it. Just stick it in the big book. The big book is the Bible in drag. <laughs> and you know, hey, you guys, I tell you. But it's just, you know, it, it was birthed from the biggest book of all times. The B-I-B-L-E. The basic instruction before leaving Earth. It gave birth to this book. A simple plan of recovery for people like you and me and countless others that's gone too far. The 12-step movement is the most powerful spiritual movement that's come into the 21st century. No Me Too movement can touch it. No Black Lives Matter can touch it. No a civil rights movement could touch it. Nothing could touch the 12-step movement. You know, nothing. Look out right now. Just imagine right now how many meetings are going on right now around the world. Not just AA. But they all spin off of Alcoholics Anonymous. So I'm standing on the backs of 100 men and women who recovered. I'm standing on some firm foundation. And I, I took it from the book, you guys, because only because I took it from the book was because the fact is I'm a spinoff from the book because I walked in the, in the rooms. I was so happy. And I, I'm still happy. Seven billion people in this, in this world. I'm the happiest person I know. <laughs> there should be two of me. I shouldn't be so selfish. But, you know, I've always had, I would, ever since, I mean, when I was hit with the spirit of the treatment, I knew then I was never going to drink again. And, and then I, I walked in the rooms, and and then I realized, I said, hmm, they telling me to shut up. But they ain't talking about nothing about this book. So I realized then I had to, mm. it said that it's better to meet God alone. That's what it says in the book, than to have someone that might misunderstand. And you can do a whole lot with this book all by itself. But that's only my experience, you know. People need people. I believe in working with others, you guys. And, you know, no doubt about it. No man's an island. We must work with one another. Am I right? No man's an island. So anyway, and the, I tell you, I, when I came home from treatment, and then I walked over to my husband, I went to my husband, I said, my husband, I said, mm-hmm, I'm telling you now. I said, you're going to have to get right or get left. Get right or get left. He said, you won't tell me to get right or get left. I said, yep, get right or get left. I said, I'm, I got to go over to the world of the spirit. I said, over here in the fourth dimension, in the world of the spirit, in, in the world of the supernatural, Guess what? The disease cannot penetrate. It cannot come over here and, hey, attack my mind. You know, the disease attack the mind first, and then it start kicking the behind second. You know, you think, 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 and then you drink, drink, drink. Hello. You know, he, he said, well, I said, I got the, when I got the treatment, I said, well, 
obsession of the mind, then all I need is a real good psychiatrist. Allergy of the body, well, all I need is a real good internist. A spiritual malady, what I needed was a real good exorcist. But anyway, you know, but I was sick. Spiritual malady, that's a sickness. A spiritual solution to a spiritual problem. That's what this program is all about. You know, the fellowship has fallen off, you guys. I hate to tell you this. They, uh, two years ago, they had a report from New York, and they said that 10%, we lost 10% of our fellowship. And we flatlined for 27 years, the fellowship. I said to myself, mm, 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 I wonder why. I know why. Lack of knowledge. Then as a result, lack of power. And uh, if they say that I need, you know, I got to have power to stay sober, 67 powers I took inside me. I, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I, I came in the rooms. I was not going to play around with this disease because it's spiritual, something that we can't see. Signs demonstrate that visual proof is the weakest proof of all. What we don't see is more powerful than what we do see. So anyway, I want to talk about some fourth dimension experiences. How much longer do I have? Anyway. I would, you know, God tell you, you guys, I could, when you're over here, your, your experiences are so extraordinary. So supernatural. There's no logic and no reason. There's no space, but there's no time behind it. And uh, about three months ago, <laughs> here we were. Here we were. Looking to get on the plane in Honolulu to go to L.A. To jump on a cruise, a 28 day cruise to Bora Bora, Tahiti, Moray, Papeti, uh, Moray, and uh, Samoan Islands. And I'm telling Curtis, Curtis, I said, we stand in this line. I don't stand in line so long. I'm not a line stander. I'm sorry. <laughs> he said, he, he just totally ignored me. I said, Curtis, did you hear me? I'm not going to stand in this line. We're going to miss the plane. We can stand in this line. And he just totally ignored me. <laughs> See, we live in a two-story house. His story and my story. So anyway, I said, Curtis, we're going to miss the plane. So here we get up to the gate. Here they're closing that door. <laughs> Adversity will introduce you to yourself. I ran up on that door. And I started banging. <laughs> open up, open up. Open up. I started banging on the door. Open up the door. Oh, God, please, open up the door. And guess what? And anyway, <laughs> anyway, anyway, I would have picked it up. Thank you, anyway. But yeah, I'm banging on the door. Open up, open up. Oh, and people looking at me like I was out of my mind. <laughs> and then Curtis, he, gets, he, gets, he was embarrassed. He walked away. And then some woman walked up on me and said, why don't you accept the unacceptable? Take responsibility. I turned around. I came down off that emotional cloud. I looked at her. <laughs> and I said to her, you, you alcoholic. Why don't you go to AA? Because you walk and talk like one of my people. <laughs> get out of my face. No, I didn't say get out of my face. But anyway. <laughs> and then when it was, I said, who she thinks she is? She all in my Kool-Aid and don't even know the flavor. <laughs> and then now I'm pissed off with him because I told him twice to get out the line. Three times to get out the line. And guess what happened? I said, God, forgive me for calling that woman alcoholic. Please. And help me to forgive him. I said, well, we missed, that. We missed the plane. We're going to miss the cruise tomorrow. So we went back to our condo. And I said, now I need some peaceful sleep. And that's what I received. God he gave me some peaceful sleep. I went to sleep. At 4 o'clock in the morning, there he was on the line. Calling Princess Cruise Line. Him and the travel agent. And he said, okay, we'll wait for you. So come on in. <clears throat> and then he called back and said, no, we can't. By the time you find your luggage, luggage is gone. By the time and you get a rent a car. And by the time you drive that traffic in L.A. to get to the port, we can't wait for you. We got. We, we, I'm sorry. And then, okay, one duck down. Second duck. 
Okay, transfer that ten thousand dollars over to the second cruise, which is um, going Christmas cruise, Christmas and New Year's cruise, a thirty day cruise. And they said, um, they said, okay. They called back and said, no, no insurance. I said, no, you ain't got no insurance on that money. That ten thousand dollars, me. I'm sorry, that, that belongs to us. And I said, oh no, they didn't. Knowledge of His will and the power. And the person, and the person carried out. That's God's money. I ain't worked in 35 years. He ain't worked in, what, 15, 16 years? Where the money coming from? Okay, it's coming from another world. God, I know they ain't just going to take your $10,000 and stick it in their pocket because we didn't have no insurance on it. See, this program was never designed to be without supernatural provision. Knowledge of his will and the power and the person to carry it out. I said, so what you going to do, Jan? You going to let them just take your money? And then the third and last and final option. Okay, you guys are coming across the pond and you're going to stop in Hawaii. So pick them up. Pick them up. Can you imagine five days to get across the pond from L.A. to Hawaii? They said, okay, yes, yes, yes. And then they turned around and said, no. Some maritime law. <coughs> you just can't pick up people just anywhere because they miss out, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You get... Just America, that you're going to pay a fee. And guess what? And then they called back and said, let them on. Let those and go across the pond and you pick them up. You know the reason why they say pick them up? They said, that big mouth, that big mouth black chick <laughs> and her husband, they're professional. 67 cruises in seven years. Pick them up. <laughs> Pick them up. No, you got to pick them up and roll out the red carpet when they come. That's exactly what they did. Five, they took five days, and here we was on the we was in an AA meeting on the beach. The twelve coconuts. Anybody been to the twelve coconuts? Yeah. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. You can see the ship out there. Five thousand people waiting, waiting for us to come and board that ship. That's a supernatural experience, you guys. That's an extraordinary experience when you well, you know. Hey, when you're down for the count, and also now you need you need some power, you know, to do the impossible, power to do the incredible, power to do the inconceivable, and power to do the insurmountable. We're in the will of God, you know. We're in the will of God. The will of God will not take me where the grace of God cannot keep me. <laughs> so they picked us up. Not only did they pick us up, can you imagine? And then we they, they got on the ship and we walked. They said, "Welcome aboard, top brass. Welcome aboard, Mister. Mrs. Carter. Welcome aboard." And then they knocked on the door after we got in our cabin. We dropped off a box, a box of chocolates. Welcome aboard. Because knowledge of his will and the power to carry it out. You guys, and that's what this thing is all about. You got to find out which, why were you put here. We all have a purpose in life. You know, and our primary purpose is what? To carry the message. I just, in treatment, I just ask God, okay, well, you didn't put me on this earth to drink and smoke crack. So what did you put me on this earth to do? In treatment, he said, live all 12 of the steps, you have a global adventure. And that's where we are. So anyway, you guys, I'm grateful to be here and to share about after we got on the cruise, the challenging, that was just one, 28 days of number challenges. But um, anyway, but it's the challenge, you need challenge. You know, without the resistance of air, a Boeing 747, it can't fly. Without the resistance of water, a boat can't float. And without the resistance of gravity, you and I can't walk. And without the resistance of the disease, you and I cannot grow. We need resistance to grow. But the power behind me is so much greater than any problem that's in front of me. And, and so like, anyway, so we got off that cruise and then we came here. And then we jumped that transfer. They made that transfer, that ten thousand dollars over here, and we got on a, a thirty-eight day. It was thirty-eight days. Yeah, thirty-eight days. It's, we did the eastern side and the western side of the cruises of uh, uh, Christmas and New Year's. And so, like anyway, I I'm just so grateful to share about just the different things, even when it comes to money, because see, step one was a problem that lies in a solution, and step two. And when I turned it over in step three, 
by activating my faith through a personality change in step four, five, six, and seven. So now I qualify for the human race. I, you know, make my amends in step eight, nine. Now I'm able to walk in love and service in step 10, 11, and 12. I, I just found my purpose. So I just started living off. The, all I just wanted in treatment, I said, now y'all tell me how to keep that disease out of my head. I, I, you know, $30,000, y'all tell me how to keep it out. And they just, mm, they gave me a $50,000 big book. <laughs> <laughs> they told me to go, to, gave me a schedule, you go to a meeting. That's what you do. I said, write that a check. <laughs> but what they did though, <laughs> the psychiatrist, he was a silk worth. Oh. By nature, you guys. He told me, he said, mm. Norma Jean, I was packing up. I PMS, I packed my stuff. <laughs> it's time to go. You know what he said to me? He said, Norma Jean, if you never drank again, if you never use drugs again, he said, you want to light up the world. That's what he said to me. He said, you'll light up the world. I said, light up the world? I hope I don't light up a crack pipe and drink alcohol. He said, because a star is born. He said, you don't have to pay us nothing. Just go out and light up the world. And here I am almost 30 years. Thank you. I got Joe Brady. That was his name. Joe Brady. Dr. Joe Brady. Mm. So now what we do on the cruises, you guys, we, okay, we got five different things that we do on the cruises. We do the 12-step meeting. We bring in all the material. Who wants to leave, you can. You know, most of the time they don't want you to come in. They just don't want to drink. I don't see how people come. I really, without a psychic change, I tell you in a minute, don't come. Don't go on no cruise. Because they drink all day. That's all they do is drink. They, with these whoopee drinkers for the most part. Whoopee, they're having fun. Okay? And, and so like, but they, they, so you find people to come in the 12th step meeting on the ships. They, they rush it up in there. <gasps> Almost drink. I said, well, you should have came. The book says you got to be spiritually fit. That's what it says in the book. But anyway, you know, I'm not here to preach to you, but you know, I don't see how y'all can do it without a psychic change. You need a psychic change. It's said it here in the book. <laughs> so anyway, and then we do something I didn't want to do. And that's when I accidentally fell off into a B-I-B-L-E basic instruction before leaving Earth meeting. And there was no accidents. And anyway, they asked me twice to speak. I said, no. I told them straight up, no. I'm a 12-stepper. I do 12 steppers. I'm sorry. Not too no church people. I'm sorry. No church people. Anyway, but when I when sat on my balcony, I got a moment of clarity, and Spirit spoke to me and said, no, you don't never turn down a request. So I said, oh, Lord, I don't do church people. And I got a moment of clarity. He said, you don't get to choose what you want to do when you walk in the will of God. You go back, and you tell that man you'll speak for him. I said, oh, Lord. He said, why don't you want to speak for the church people? I said, because they're too judgmental. Well, I got a moment. You'll fit right in. <laughs> anyway, somebody, somebody emailed me today said, I heard you was talking about me. <laughs> I was, some hours back, I, I said, oh, my Lord. I, I, was talk, I don't know how time you talk about that. I, I, I'm not going to say I'm perfect at this thing, but I used to be like the black Joan Rivers of Riverside, California. <laughs> I used to talk about you and your mama too, and, um, and you know, yeah, I, you know, oh, honey, I had, uh, oh, Lord, have mercy. But anyway, I, I realized that when I, okay, 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 I'll speak for you guys. I'll speak. He said, but if you come, I want you to take the, I want you to bring those steps of scripture. I said, what? Now you gonna tell me how to come in here and speak? You gonna tell me what to say and you know how to do it? <sighs> You know, I wouldn't kind of not you guys. I wouldn't, you know, I, I'm telling you guys. Even though, because in my family, I got a brother that's a pastor. I got a father that dropped dead behind the podium. Okay. And you, I, I, you know, I know how church people are. Okay. But see, I was outcast troublemaker. I was the heathen. I was the white sheep in the family. Okay. <laughs> so um, I know about church people. So anyway, I went in there, you guys, and here these, they were sitting around about this many people. And I went upside one. I came down the other side of it. I had steps and I had scriptures. I presented. I said, the program was never designed to stop drinking, even though I had to start drinking. The program is a design for living. And I gave them reasons why. I said, a design for living. I said, all y'all talk about is the kingdom. You different, different religion. You talk about nothing but the kingdom. <laughs> I said, the 12 step program is the bullet train right into the fourth dimension, right into the kingdom of God. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done. And they got up, 
<laughs> they liked what I had to say. I called a surprise. I did, you know, I said, mm, Curtis, we got new calling. Church folks. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> so we do that, you know, and we do the 12 step meeting, and then we have the, you know, the, the pool deck. And that's I that's my favorite place, the pool. And the dog laying out there on the pool, and they come up to me. Hey, come over here. You know, I've been watching you for two or three days. And you are the most happiest person I know. I, would you come over here and pray for me? I said, Whoa, oh, Lord have mercy. Now she wants me to pray for her. Okay, I'll pray for you. Anyway, so I'm just grateful to be here, you guys. We got uh, then the then we have also the crew. Did you come in with the 12 steps and you know the Bible, the Bible. I said, I'm going to bring the 12 steps. So I come to your Bible study once a week. That, that's fine. Okay. Anyway, we haven't done that yet, but this has been, you know, they've been uh, last past three or four years. So I'm grateful to be here to share with you guys that this program works, but it's not for people that want it. It's not for people that need it. It's designed for people that do it. Because if wishes were horses, then beggars would ride. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, because a big shot is a little shot who keeps right on shooting. Let me tell you about money, how, how God takes care of your money. Now we got all this money. We liquidated everything in California, and that was 15 years ago. Now we got a bundle of money. You know, one thing I watched today on YouTube, people that get hit them lottos, and they go bonkers. They go crazy, and they end up dead, okay, within two or three years because they don't have the mind for it. You got to have a spiritual mind to have that kind of money. Otherwise, you go crazy. And I watched it. I, could, I said, wow, thank you, Lord. See, step two got to be. Step two and three is truly the hope beyond the scope of human limitation. So anyway, all this money now, we got this bundle, bundle, bundle of money. Liquidated, house, house sold within three hours. They outbid in my house $70,000 more than the asking price in, in, in California. And then sold the business within the week. Sold the motor coach. We got all this money now. And had a yard sale, and this is 15 years ago. Yard sale, and how much? $30,000 in a week, just on the yard sale. So I'm saying, oh, God, it's too much money, too much money. Now my head is telling me, let's go, let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know, I love them slot machines. You know, I used to be a slot slut. You know, I'm not, I love them slot machines. And, and I love Nordstrom's, you guys. Guess what? I love Nordstrom's. Now I'm ready to go to Nordstrom's. All this money. I used to be a Nordstrom hoe. See, alcohol is just a, a symptom of a much greater problem. More and more that hole. More and more and more. That hole that's in the soul. That, that hole that we all have here, it was designed for God. I didn't realize that until I started living in steps. Until I came down, I dropped to my knees and said, God help me. Okay? And now it's filled up with enough more power of God as a result of living these steps. So anyway... All this money, and then Curtis got crazy. Now he wants to drive all over the nation in his motor coach. We got a 43-foot diesel pushing motor coach now with two bathrooms, his and hers. And we run it all over the place. And, and all these states. That's what we do. All these states. We hit every, we hit every state in this country. I said, Curtis, this money is not designed for us to put it in this diesel pusher. I said, we got to do other things other than just drive all, just run it all over the country. And so I went straight to the throne one more time. And, and then the money that was left, I made a transfer. And it got lost. And we talking about quite a bit of hundred. I mean, you know, I'm not going to tell you how much. Anyway, we made a transfer and it got lost. Now nobody knows where the money is. Nobody can give you the tracking number. We don't know nothing about that tracking number. That tracer, I'm sorry. Yeah. And I start crying. Ah, one more time. Adversity will introduce you to yourself. Ah. So Curtis said to me, will you stop it, please? <laughs> he said, we just going to Mississippi. You got an engagement down there. You know, you set up to speak down there at the anniversary group. <laughs> ah, I'm not going to Mississippi. <laughs> I said, I'm going there back to California to get my money. <laughs> anyway, then I got a moment of clarity. Sex, social insecurity. You know, four, five, six, and seven, I handed all that over to God. So if you come from your heart, say, okay, God, you take this and you give me back what you want me to have, okay? My sex, my sexual instincts, social instinct, you know, and, and you know, my security. You, this, it belongs to you. 
because people were bugging me about the money. They want, oh, you want you gotta help us out, you know. Don't never hit no, don't hit no lotto and tell somebody about it. No. Keep it to yourself. <laughs> anyway, I could not believe the people that was bugging me about this money, and that's when I said, okay, God, it belongs to you. Okay, you caused that to happen because the house was in foreclosure five times behind my drinking and using. Okay, you you, you you take. I was forced. You take this money and stop these people from bugging me and begging me about this money that don't belong to them. And that's what happened. And then I get the moment of clarity in my throes. Oh, oh, the, the money's gone. Wait a minute! I gave them the money. I gave him. I gave him that money. So from the heart, I said, "Okay, baby, let's come on. Let's go to Mississippi. Let's go on to Miss- Mississippi." Went to Mississippi, had a group, I call it Keep Running, Mississippi. Went to Mississippi, and then a big old group, and I told them the money came up missing, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to carry the message of power and purpose and the promises. After I finished sharing, they stood up and gave me a standing ovation because that stigma of emotionalism was gone. So that was a Saturday night, got back to Nashville, made that call, not 9 a.m. Not 9 a.m. Did I make that call to the bank? I made that call at 9.15 a.m. <laughs> Hello. Because I gave God that money. And this, I said, put the right person on the phone. Father. Our father. And that's what he did. And guess what happened? You guys, guess what? And she said, oh, my God. I can't believe. I heard her clicking. I can't believe what happened here. Oh my God, I can't believe. She was getting, you could tell she was getting emotional. She said, I hate to tell you this, but someone change your tracking number. Someone's going to come and take the money. They changed it, but God put it there to catch it before they made that change, before they took it. And she said, right now, I'm transferring that money back into your account right now. That was the angel on the other side of that phone. She says, back in your account, that money. And see, you guys, all because the power behind me is so much greater than any problem that's in front of me. That's why in that world of cause and effect, mm-mm, you need the power to transcend people, places, and things. Power to transcend situations, circumstances, and uh, situations. You get the power to transcend you know, racism, sexism, atheism, humanism. Man is the measure of all things. You go try to apply for a job tomorrow. Man is the measure of all things, okay? Up and down. You know, side by side. They, they measure you up. They measure you down. Okay, whatever. So that's the reason why I had to cross over into the fourth dimension, into the kingdom of God, so that I can have me some power to be happy, joyous, and free, and, and, and live in my destiny. So the big book says we trudge the road of happy destiny. We will not regret the past. Nor wish to shut the door on it. My past is gone, you guys. The monkey and the lion were fellowshipping. And the monkey walked up over to the lion. And he pimp slapped him. Bam, bam. And the lion roared. Rrr! What was that for? Monkey turned around and said, it doesn't matter. It's in the past. <laughs> it's in the past. <laughs> It's in the past, you guys. You, you know what I'm saying? That's the reason why I do not dwell. I do not dwell in the past. It's gone. Forever. For me, it's gone. As long as I keep my relationship right with God, and I don't insult him. That's the main thing. As long as I, I, just, I say I ain't perfect by no means. He'd be more than glad to tell y'all that. I, I'm not perfect. But I tell you one thing I don't do. I don't insult God. I got power not to insult God. So I can live this life beyond my wildest imagination. So I'm grateful to be here, and um, and so now we got all the other cruises booked up. We had planned on going to Cuba. All right. And uh, I told you what happened. Oh, I tell you, I was, we can't wait to go to Cuba on a cruise. So I told Curtis, I said, why do they keep discounting it every week? Usually, in advance, pay for it. I said, no, it's, uh-oh. I said, pull that, pull it up on the computer. Let me see that that ship in in Cuba. He pulled it up. I, I said, mm-mm. That's the first cruise liner they ever built on the ocean. I ain't going on that cruise. No, I don't think so. And, and, and they're going to charge you that kind of money? Look at that floor. He started, they start going through. And, and that's supposed to be a balcony? 
And no sweets? I, I don't think so. <laughs> See, and that's the reason why we didn't go, you guys. Then we got over to Cuba, and I saw, what well, I saw, I did like them cars, some old-fashioned cars, some colorful cars. But everything else was, hmm. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Okay? <laughs> no comment. Anyway, so I got my seven. I'm keeping my seven thousand dollars in my pocket. I'm going back over here to um, uh, Hawaii, and we're gonna jump on a. We're going to China. Wow. And then we're gonna jump on a cruise there, and we're going to Vietnam, Taiwan, Japan, and Australia. Oh, that's beautiful. And uh, you know, we get to run. We get all because, like I said, knowledge of His will. Was never designed to be without supernatural provision. Physically, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of all these steps has put us in alignment with the assignment worthy to carry this message around the world. And uh, having had a spiritual awakening also has also, it covers the full spectrum of the human existence physically. Mentally, emotionally, morally, socially, financially, verbally, relationally, as well as spiritually. I mean, full, the full spectrum. And uh, so I'm just grateful to be here, you guys. And so I'll end on, I got to do my two pit bulls. And I, I'll end it. We all have two pit bulls on the inside of us. And they always fight the territory. One name negative and one name positive. I have to make a decision, which one do I feed? I fed negative pitfall, obsessions and compulsions, addiction and derelictions, morbidity and negativity was my personality. Okay, now today I feed positive pitfall, unconditional love, joy, peace, happiness, faith, courage, and hope. Integrity. Integrity is a state of being exempt from self-deception. That's integrity. And so, he was negative pit bull. He was up here large and large and in charge. And he was positive pit bull. He was down here in the basement. So one, two, and three, negative pit bull, he decreased. And positive pit bull, he increased. Four, five, six, and seven, negative pit bull, he decreased. And positive pit bull, he increased. <coughs> Eight and nine, negative pit bull, he decreased. And positive pit bull, he increased. And 10, 11, and 12, negative pit bull, he decreased into the basement of darkness where he belongs. And positive pit bull, he increased into the sunlight of the spirit. Now today, positive pit bull, he has power, purpose, promises, provision, protection, passion, presence, peace, perseverance, persistence, persona, position, possession, pizzazz, and permanent recovery. So if loving this program is wrong, I don't want to be right. I love this new life that I'm living, and I'm living this new life that I love. I got a big God. I have a little gorilla. My God stands tall, and my gorilla is small. I do not go to that gorilla and tell it how big my God is. I go to my God and tell it. I do not go to the gorilla and tell him how big my problem is. I just go to God and tell it. Exactly how small my gorilla is today. I need you to help me stay sober and clean and be wholesome and useful each and every day of my life. Amen. And that's the reason why, you guys, there's no lack of limitation, not in my life. There's no such thing as lack of money, lack of, you know, a relationship second to none between a man and a woman that's healed from the disease of alcoholism and drug addiction. Now, we ain't perfect as a couple, but I tell you what, we walk in the sunlight and the spirit. So, if it is to be, it is up to me. If I don't go within, I will go without. If I don't stand for something, I'll fall for anything. I'd rather be wrong doing something than wrong doing nothing. I don't go along so that I can get along. My life is my message, and my message is my life. I'd rather try something big and fail than to do absolutely nothing and, su and succeed. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm wrong about this program, then it doesn't matter what I'm right about. If I have a misunderstanding about this program, then abuse is inevitable. Thank you, Bob, and thank you, Bill. Thank you for the opportunity for living in God's will. Mm -hmm.
If the mind can conceive it, and if the heart can receive it, the will has achieved it. Norma Jean C. I'm happy, Joyce, and I'm free. From Waikiki Beach, Hawaii. Thank you for the show. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.